Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Karen Drosh. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk to all of you guys. Uh, today, I'll be giving some clinical clues to help you guys decipher some common and less common dermatology skin rashes um, that you might counter on a general physical exam. So I tried to keep it to something that hopefully you guys would all be interested in and would hopefully apply to as many of you as possible and that hopefully um, you guys would learn from. Given the limited amount of time, I'm purely going to focus just on morphology and how to clini clinically identify these rashes so that you can nail the diagnosis and then know when to treat yourselves and when to refer our way. I tried to come up with a few differentials of sort of similar looking rashes, and I'll give you some clues how to distinguish between them. Um, it will be a little bit kind of rapid fire, um, but I can answer questions along the way if you interrupt me or just at the end is uh, maybe easier too. Um, first, a couple of words about where I come from. So um, I work at Derm Wellesley, uh, Derm Wellesley with um, Dr. Emily Wise. Uh, we're a relatively new practice that was born in 2019 and founded by Dr. Emily Wise. And more recently this past year, she brought me on to her team uh, when I moved back to Massachusetts from New York City. Uh, we're located right off of Route 9 in Wellesley and we're dedicated to treating medical, surgical and cosmetic dermatologic patients. We know that for most of you guys, one of the most frustrating things when referring to dermatology is the wait list and subsequent sort of delay in getting your patients in and getting them treated. Um, so um, I wanted to just let you guys know we are offering um, urgent care appointments where um, uh, we've reserved a few slots in, in our schedule uh, that are blocked off for uh, same day or next day or uh, within a couple days, uh, urgent care visits and add-ons. So we can work with you guys, take care of our patients in a more timely manner. Um, if you guys have anyone that you need seen, you can either call the office, you can reach out directly to our um, office manager, Wendy, her um, email's down there, or you can just shoot me or um, Emily uh, Wise a message on Epic and we're more than happy to accommodate you guys. So without further ado, I'll get started. I don't have any disclosures related to this. Um, so lots of pictures coming your way. So the first category I'll talk about is so these larger scaly plaques. Um, and so this is sort of, um, uh, just a warm up. Um, as you can see here, these are well demarcated uh, pink scaly plaques with kind of this silvery scale. Um, so you see this on an exam. Um, this should uh, make you think of psoriasis. Um, but there are other similar rashes that can look a lot like this. Um, uh, so this is one of them, another uh, rash with some larger pink. Um, uh, plaques with some, some overlying scale. Um, here are the some of the differentiating factors um, that I'll point out. So you can see there, um, the scale isn't as, as silverly, silvery. Um, and then also there's these islands of sparing here, um, which is sort of pathognomonic for this condition. Um, also, as you can see here, there's a little bit of a follicular accentuation, which is also um, uh, really classic for this condition. And then if you take a look at the patient's hands, you might see this waxy um, keratoderma, sort of orangey. Um, so this is pityriasis rubra pilaris, um, which is a little bit different, but can look similar to psoriasis, especially to erythrodermic um, psoriasis. Um, here we have our classic eczematous rash. Um, so this is just atopic dermatitis, but when you see a rash, that looks like this, you should think eczematous. And, um, so things I'll point out here, um, accentuation of the skin marking. So that like kenification, um, can be, uh, common in sort of a chronic eczema. And then oftentimes in eczema rashes, we'll see these little like pinpoint hemorrhagic crusts. And that's just evidence that the patient's really been kind of scratching to the point where they're breaking their skin. And that's always a tip off to me that there's, um, it's, it's more of an eczematous um, rash. On the right here, I have a picture of um, skin of color and that just so that you can note that sometimes um, eczema in, especially in patients with skin of color, but also in, um, in uh, patient, Caucasian patients can have more of a follicular accentuation. And so here you can see, this is more of a, a follicular eczema on the trunk here in this, in this patient. This next rash is also a, a common kind of classic one that I'm sure you guys see frequently, pink plaques. Here, the scale's just a little bit more greasy um, and that's really the tip off to this being seborrheic dermatitis. Um, happens more in the seborrheic areas. So glabella, nasolabial folds around the nasal alar creases, scalp, really common areas can happen on the chest as well. Um, so this is sebderm. 
So this is something we're seeing a ton of uh, right now in our offices, and I'm sure you guys are seeing a lot of this too. So this is um, also an eczematous rash, but here you see it looks a little different. You get these little kind of cracks and fissures in the skin um, that resemble sort of a, a cracked dry riverbed, which I, I have here in the bottom right. Um, and this is asteatotic or zoonotic eczema. So you see this, you should counsel patients about dry skin care, um, bathing, you know, uh, limiting their bathing uh, to, you know, once day maximum, less than 10 minutes, warm water, tons of emollients all over their body. Um, so that's dryness basically causing eczema. Here we have another one, and this one's a little tricky. It looks like those kind of pink plaques with overlying scale. But if you look here, um, you can see it's actually a little bit of a superficial erosion and not as much of a, a plaque. Um, and if you look in certain areas, they're very like well demarcated. It almost looks like there was a blister here that has become unroofed and that's exactly what's happening. And now we have this sort of what's um, likened to a cornflake scale on the top. And so this is actually uh, pemphigus foliaceous, but can kind of sometimes look a lot like those other ones. All right, so now we'll go into just small scaly plaques. Um, here we have um, these small oval shaped. Um, that's the main thing I'll point out here is that these are very oval shaped plaques um, and they tend to follow the uh, skin demarcation lines. Um, in med school, I think a lot of, of us learned that it's sort of a Christmas tree pattern, but really it should just, you, they should all be oriented in like a similar orientation. And this is pityriasis rosea. You often get that larger first herald patch that we all hear about. But for me, the, the best thing that tips me off to this diagnosis, even more than the herald patch is the oval shape. So really look for that. Um, and that's in, um, in contrast to this, which is more uh, variable uh, shaped uh, papules and plaques. And here we have that silvery scale again. So this is gut tate psoriasis. Um, it really is kind of like a bubblegum pink uh, color that you get through that the, with the silvery scale on top of the, the pink plaques and papules. Um, so this one is more um, uh, of a tan um, plaque or patch that you can get. And um, as you can see here, the, the, they're sort of elongated and almost they're described as digitate. So it almost looks like your fingers, like making fingerprints on the side of the torso. That's a very common area for this one. Um, this is small plaque parasoriasis, so sort of in that family of mycosis fungoides um, on, on a spectrum there. Uh, so really look for that digitate sort of like, like fingerprinting um, often on the trunk and it can have a fine scale as well. Sometimes they're a little bit more pink. These happen to be both kind of more tan examples. Um, here we have um, more purple, as you can see, than, than pink uh, papules and plaques um, with some overlying scale. And the scale is, is white and sort of forms these like white lines that are um, similar to that, that Wickham striae that you can see in the mouth as well. So this is lichen planus. So look at, for the purple flat topped papules and plaques with some of that overlying um, white sort of net-like scale. And um, here, this is um, another eczematous rash. And um, the main thing that you can see here is it's a bunch of little kind of eczematous follicular papules that are combining and coalescing into a plaque. Um, and the plaques are coin shaped or numular. So this is numular eczema. Um, this is another one that I think you guys probably see really, really frequently. Um, and um, it can present as pink, tan, or hypopigmented patches with this very, very fine scale over it um, that's described as furforaceous scale, which basically means resembling bran. Um, and this is tinea, tinea versicolor. And it, it basically, if you try to, if you see something like this and you try to scratch it, you'll see some of that, like uh, that really furforaceous scale uh, come out once you scratch it. So you can always try to scratch it. If you don't see that come out and it's just hypopigmented, you may be in the, in the uh, phase after you've treated the malassezia and you're just left with that, um, the skin discoloration afterwards. And then this is the great um, mimicker. Uh, so lots of kind of nondescript pink uh, papules and plaques with some overlying scale. So always something, something to think about is secondary syphilis, which can present like this as well. Um, annular scaly plaques. So um, this is the first one. You can see there's uh, uh, annular plaques um, with uh, some scale around the edges and there's a sort of central clearing, which is part of that annular definition. Um, here, the central clearing is 
similar to the, the normal surrounding skin. Um, and really commonly this occurs on the chest and the upper back and in sun exposed areas. And this is subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus or SCLE. Um, and this is in uh, contrast to this rash, which has um, in the, the central clearing is more scarred and hypopigmented and you have this sort of violaceous rim around them. Um, Sometimes with this one, you can get carpet tacking, which is sort of like a follicular accentuation in the middle. Um, and this one is discoid lupus erythematosus or DLE. So I'll show you in contrast here, the central clearing is more just um, similar to the surrounding skin or a little pink as opposed to here where it's really hypopigmented and kind of scarred down. Um, and that should tip you off to DLE. Um, this is a very common rash, uh, another one of our annular scaly rashes. And here, what I'll point out is that it looks like there's sort of like a leading edge um, of, uh, of scale and a leading edge of sort of these like little pinpoint hemorrhagic crusts. Um, and this is tinea corporis. So really look for that leading edge of scale and tinea corporis. And it almost looks like it's like expanding outwards. Uh, and that's as opposed to this one where there's a trailing scale. And so you can see the erythema is out here, but the scale is, is more central. And this is erythema annulare centrifugum, um, which is sort of like a hype, sort of like a hypersensitivity reaction. Um, some describe it as that um, to some either medication, drug, infection, um, or sometimes malignancy. You can see it. Here, um, I threw this one in here because it can look like a lot of the other ones, but it's not scaly, but it is somewhat annular. And this is a variant of something that we commonly see. And there's a clue up here on the neck. They, these are a little bit more um, edematous pink uh, papules and plaques. Um, and this is a, the annular form of urticaria. So also something to think about when you see less, not, not scaly, but annular uh, papules and plaques. And then this one um, is a variant of annular. It's actually targetoid. So you can see there's actually three zones. So there's a central redness, a white clearing around that, and then the pink clearing around that, or the, uh, the pink uh, ring around that. And that is um, our targetoid in our targetoid differential, which um, this one is um, erythema chronica migrans uh, caused by Lyme disease. Okay, so a couple slides just about drug rashes. Um, so this one, pink papules and plaques um, on often on the trunk, but on the extremities too. This is our classic morbilliform drug rash. Morbilliform meaning looking like the rash from measles. Um, one thing I'll point out here is that sometimes, especially in patients with low platelets, you can um, see some bleeding into the rash a little bit. So you can see little pinpoint um, petechiae inside the rash, which can confuse people. Um, but um, it is a common um, entity that you can kind of like secondarily bleed into the rash. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's anything beyond just a, a run of the mill morbilliform drug rash. Um, here we have a rash that looks very different from a lot of the other ones. Um, so these really like very circular um, uh, plaques that have sort of a dusky center. And some of them, you can get a little bit of vesiculation or bullae in the center. Uh, hyperpigmentation is really common. It loves the lips, loves the genitalia. This is your fixed drug eruption. This, um, back to our sort of targetoid differential, here we have um, these um, papular targets with three zones. You can see like the pink and then the, the white and then the pink around the rim. Um, and this drug rash um, likes the, the mucosa, um, as you can see in the picture down here. Um, and so this one is erythema multiforme, also likes acral, um, so likes the hands um, and the feet. So look in those areas as well. Um, so this is the, the feared um, drug rash. So here, the thing to look for is that we have um, if you look closely, these are sort of their, what we call atypical targets, meaning they have just two zones where you have like a dusky center and then this sort of erythematous rim around it. And they really, and you can see it kind of over here um, as well too. I hope you can see my pointer. Um, and um, and it, they can coalesce and then sort of you get that Nikolsky sign where you see the sloughing of the skin um, with a tangential pressure. Um, loves the chest, loves the face. Um, oftentimes with SJS, which is what this is, um, you'll walk in and you'll say like this, this is an SJS face um, where you really have like the hemorrhagic mucositis of the lips and um, loves the cheeks as well. 
Um, and then TEN, which is this one, is um, just basically a larger surface area of the SJS. Um, this was an unfortunate patient that, um, that I saw that, um, as you can see, this is all just dermis. She actually has um, very darkly pigmented skin. So that was a very unfortunate case. Um, this picture, if you can burn this one into your head, this is pretty pathognomonic for, um, for AGEP or acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis, um, where you have these sort of pink, um, pat, pink background studded with little pustules. And they can be teeny tiny, teeny tiny pustules. Um, and um, just important to monitor calcium in, in this rash. So it's important to distinguish it. And also it can be uh, different medications are, um, are more, um, more likely with this one. So um, just an important thing to keep in mind. So other blistering rashes beyond drug rashes, um, this is um, one of the classics. So you can see here these tense bullae. Um, what can also be helpful here is that there's a background of like an urticarial plaque. Um, and so this is uh, bullous pemphigoid. So really look for those tense bullae in the background urticarial plaque. Um, here, um, it's similar. You can get tense bullae, but more often what you see is just something like the picture in the, on the right here, um, where you just see a sloughed off um, kind of crusted lesion that looks like it may have been a, a bulla. So it has this kind of um, circular border. That's a clue that it might have been a blister at one point. Um, common um, in kids, and this is bullus impetigo. So that really kind of honey colored crusting um, that uh, an erosion that looks like it might have been a bulla. Here, location helps the most. Um, so it's usually just kind of isolated to one area of the foot, can be on the dorsal or the, uh, the plantar foot. Um, and it, there are often other signs of uh, tinea in these patients. So this is bullous tinea. So as you can see here, you can look at the nails, you can look for scale in between the toes and on the feet um, that can help tip you off to this diagnosis. And here, I'm just testing you guys. This is uh, something we actually saw earlier, um, a different picture of it, but these are those super, superficial erosions um, with the cornflake scale. And this is our pemphigus foliaceus, which is another blistering rash, but um, uh, very superficial. It's kind of like a subcorneal, just right under the, the top of the top layer of the epidermis is where the split is for these. And that's in um, contrast to this, which is um, pemphigus vulgaris, where the split is actually much deeper in the epidermis. And as you can see, it's very different. The skin that, um, that you, you can tell that the skin underneath is more kind of red and shiny. And that just suggests that you're closer to, or even at dermis, um, as opposed to the pemphigus foliaceus, where it's more of kind of like a pink and less wet and shiny. Okay. So a couple of common ulcers, um, so the key to this one is that you can see this hyperkeratotic um, rim, and that just suggests that this is a, an area of, of repeated pressure. Um, so this is your neuropathic or diabetic often um, ulcer. Here um, we have this purple sort of violaceous rim um, with rolled borders, and you can kind of tell that there's like some undermining in here. Um, you can also get cribiform scarring, so that's kind of just like just bumpy um, scarring in the middle uh, as it heals. And this is your, um, your PG, your pyogenic um, uh, granuloma. I'm oh, sorry, this is a, a pi this is a PG pyoderma gang gangrenosum, pyogenic granuloma, that's a, an error. Um, and um, here you have a, an ulcer that's just kind of looks um, a little strange. It's like angulated and um, and sort of like a, a funny shape. Um, and so something to think about here, when you see those kind of like strange shapes that doesn't look like it's really um, something caused from the inside, you think about something happening from the outside. So this is a, a factitial ulcer. Someone's like picking at, at their skin. Um, and then here we have two different kinds. Um, so on uh, the left-hand side, that's more of like a punched out um, ulcer and, um, and it's often happens on the lateral malleolus, but not always. Um, and you can see in the background, there's some redness. Oftentimes there's atrophy and a loss of hair. Those are your arterial ulcers. Um, as opposed to the background here on the right where there's some stasis changes. So these are your venous ulcers on the right. Um, so what I mean by stasis changes is just like hyperpigmentation, scale, sometimes swelling. Um, and um, often these ones happen on the medial malleoli, but again, not always.
Okay. And then outside jobs. So this is just things that happen that from the outside in, as opposed to the inside out. So things that we're coming into contact with and things like that. Um, so this is our classic one, which is um, our linear vesicles. This is going to be allergic contact dermatitis. And in particular, this one's poison ivy. One of the, the clues to poison ivy, you can see these little black um, dots and that's um, oxidation um, of the toxicodendron, which is the, the plant that causes it. The oil, um, once it touches the skin, can oxidize and you get this little these little black dots and that's called black dot, dot poison ivy. Um, so that's just a clue that it's, it's poison ivy. That's the culprit. Um, common on the um, lower abdomen around the um, button of the pants and also common um, around earrings um, is, you know, from nickel, um, another form of allergic contact dermatitis. Um, this one we see often there's um, some erosions and blistering on the fingers. And then you can see sort of hyperpigmented, um, uh, what looks like dripping down the arms. Um, and this is our phytophotodermatitis. So someone came into contact with limes or um, that that's sort of a classic one, but there's a lot of other things that can cause it. Um, like figs and certain weeds and stuff can also cause this and basically um, just reacts with the sun in, in a toxic way um, and causes this rash. So that's phytophotodermatitis. So this can look pretty scary sometimes, um, but, um, but one of the main clues to this one is that as you can see, there's sort of um, these, these uh, thickened uh, hyperpigmented and sort of eroded papules all over the body, but sparing um, this area on the upper, um, upper back, which is called the butterfly sign, um, because um, it, uh, it's the area that the patient can't reach. So this is, these are neurotic excoriations or parigo nodules. So you may just wanna do like a paritis workup in this patient to see if, um, if they're actually itchy, but there's really no primary lesions here. This is all just secondary change and thickening of the skin from scratching and picking at the skin. All right, palmo plantar rash is just a couple ones here. Um, so uh, if you see these sort of what they're called is ham colored um, macules and papules on the palms and soles, sometimes with some overlying, um, uh, overlying scale, it's sort of like a brown red. I don't know if you can appreciate that. Um, this is a tip off for syphilis. Um, as opposed to here, um, we have more oval shaped sort of somewhat gray macules on the palms. Sometimes they're just red um, macules and papules. This is hand, foot and mouth disease. So take a look in, in the mouth if you see something that looks like this. And um, really that kind of like, they call it like a football shape um, and, and more gray for this one. Here we have our three zones. So this is erythema multiforme, uh, loves the palms. Um, this one, some more kind of fissuring and, and scale. Um, this is a, an irritant dermatitis. Uh, we're seeing a ton of it uh, from frequent hand washing with, with COVID right now. So uh, something I'm sure you guys will encounter if you look for it um, in, in your patients. And then um, here we have more deep-seated um, vesicles that are described as tapioca-like. Um, uh, and um, happens often on the on the palms. Sometimes can almost have like this brown discoloration. Um, so this is dyshydrotic eczema, which we're also seeing a ton of right now um, with all the hand washing. And then just a couple of perioral rashes to finish off. Um, so this one, um, as you can see, there's no. It, it starts basically on the vermilion lip and continues up um, to the cutaneous lip. There's like no break. And that this is um, classic, and it looks exempted as this classic for lip liquors dermatitis because it's kind of as far as the tongue can reach. Um, and that's as opposed to this one where it, there's the lip, the vermilion border, and then this little clearing here, and then the rash. And this is more of your uh, perioral dermatitis. You can see like the pink papules um, around the face, uh, around the mouth, rather. Um, so I'll just end here with, um, with our. Uh, a slide just in case anybody missed it from the beginning. Um, I work with um, Emily Wise at Durham Wellesley. Um, if you guys need, have any questions, we're happy to, to help you guys out. Um, or if you need to get anybody in quickly, we are, uh, we do have um, some urgent care slots built into our schedule. So you can uh, call us, reach out to our office manager, or just shoot us a, a message on Epic, um, either myself or, or Emily. Um, we're happy to help. Thanks, Karen. Uh, I definitely should have given a stronger warning about not eating in front of those photos. Sorry about that. Um, thanks so much.
So that was really quick, I, you know, and I know you didn't have time to kind of talk about treatments at all, but I guess we're all kind of frustrated with those last few um, ones, um, not the lip lickers, but the hand dermatitis and mm -hmm. the, um, and the uh, dyshydrotic eczema in the time of all this hand washing. What do you, uh, what do you perform? What are you telling your patients? What kind of tricks can you give us to give yeah. to our patients about some of that stuff? Yeah, definitely. And we're seeing a ton of it. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm telling patients, like, I'm not going to tell you not to wash your hands. Obviously we all have to wash our hands. So um, what I tell people is that like, every time you do wash your hands, you're really stripping off like the oils, the natural oils of your, on your skin that protect um, the, the water in your skin from escaping. So you're, you're really drying them out. So I just recommend like carrying around a little thing of moisturizer everywhere they go, just like in your purse, in your coat pocket. And like, anytime you're, you're hand sanitizing, you're moisturizing afterwards to add that back on. And then really like they need topical steroids. So, um, on the, on, especially on the palms, don't be scared to go strong. Clobetazole is, is totally fine. Um, sometimes you really need to hit them hard. And do you have a favorite emollient for the hand or do you just give on um, what, what's your usual spiel about that? Yeah. So I, I tell them like the, the, any emollient that you'll use is an emollient that I like. Um, but ones that I tend to recommend, um, are Eucerin, CeraVe, Cetaphil. Um, if they can handle the grease, Aquaphor and Vaseline are great. Um, but a lot of times, especially on the hands, people can't really tolerate that. So, um, there's like, there's a Eucerin eczema relief one that I, I like it goes on, it goes on well. Um, but you know, those are just some brands. Terrific. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, I'll take the last two minutes to talk. Uh, we, you know, our walk-in, our orthopedic walk-in is now open, open eight to eight, Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, any orthopedic injury. There is a phone number you can call for an appointment, but you can also walk in right at 978 and be cared for by our sports medicine team. And then lastly, I know there's a lot of uh, news about the vaccine. I, I will stay on this call if people have any questions. We are reopening up our vaccine site at TripAdvisor and our patients will be able to get our vaccine again at the TripAdvisor site. Um, you guys should have seen messaging about that. Once again, we wanna thank Dr. Karen Drosch who has joined um, Emily Wise in practice and I'm sure they'd be happy to see you, uh, see you, see your patients or you if you have a dermatological problem. <laughs> Thanks again, Karen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.